is the Glass Cannon Network. We are so excited to be here tonight. There's nothing better than a second show of the weekend. <laughs> Milwaukee was great, but let's be honest, it was a warm-up to the real show. <laughs> you know, there are days when I sit alone, ignoring Joe's emails and calls. So all days. <laughs> So an average Tuesday. 365 days a year, I sit at home. <laughs> and there are days that I worry sometimes that our fan base, that we affectionately call Glass Cannon Nation, or the Nash, I worry that the Nash is weakening. How dare you? So much has changed since we started this dog and pony show seven years ago. And nerds don't like change. So I worry sometimes that the nation's losing steam when I read hateful comments online written by asocial troglodytes who have never kissed a girl. I didn't know you had such a pervasive presence on online forums, Troy. <laughs> You'll have your turn, Matthew. <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, against these uh, occasional moments of doubt, we forge ahead and we decide to make a stop in an often overlooked city 
the kid sister to the city that most people know about. <laughs> a city where tots and food on a stick are considered essential food groups. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, of course, talking about the city of St. Paul, Minnesota. Yeah! So we decide to bring Glass Cannon Live to this barely known one-horse town. <laughs> At great financial risks to ourselves and our business and our families. <laughs> when we can literally go anywhere we want. Lots of cities we could choose, but we decide to come here to St. Paul, to this beautiful Amsterdam bar and hall. Beautiful. And we sell this motherfucker out. Yeah! You! Yeah! So, for the 30,000 people here this evening, if you're watching the video later, from all of us, I want to say thank you, because I never get a chance to say that at the end of the show. We always run off and cry. <laughs> Right into the limos. Right into the limos, <laughs> separate waiting outside. Separate limos, separate to limos. Take us to the helicopter. <laughs> to, the, <laughs> to the palace. <laughs> to the five separate limos to take us to five separate helicopters. <laughs> we weep openly, but I want to say thank you because you are a shining example that the Nash is stronger than ever. <laughs> and even though your city doesn't fall on any top 10 lists <laughs> or top 100 lists, <laughs> or several of the top 500 lists that I researched <laughs> while coming up with this monologue, except for most obese cities in America. <laughs> you should be proud that while you're not considered special by American or global standards, <laughs> you're fucking special to us. <laughs> Now, by, by now, you've probably heard through the grapevine that our resident hill giant that we hired to be our technical director <laughs> got the COVID. Yes. Have you heard about this disease? Have you heard about this? <laughs> you hear this? You hear about this? It's out there. Um, so uh, he <laughs> missed there. this leg of the tour. But while we miss having him this weekend, we saved thousands of dollars on uh, specially crafted chairs for him to sit in. <laughs> <laughs> pallets of food from Costco to keep his metabolism going. <laughs> this was a good weekend for us. <laughs> Just rolling pallets <laughs> into the double tree. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Just backing them up. <laughs> Those big stacks of cabbages and melons. <laughs> <laughs> like, I need more cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> cabbages, cabbages, and expensive bicycles. That's right. <laughs> he goes through them quickly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> From city to city, he just throws the bike, throws the bike out. <laughs> but you know the old saying: when God gives an ogre an incurable disease, he opens a window of fresh, patchouli-smelling hippie air. <laughs> <laughs> you know that saying, right? <laughs> Do you know that saying? Oh, no. And in case you missed it, that fresh hippie air you're smelling tonight is Cindy Emanuel! <laughs> Cindy! Thank you. Cindy, Thank you. you filthy hippie. <laughs> Have you enjoyed your first Glass Cannon Live weekend? Absolutely. I say thank you, not to you. Just so you guys know, I'm saying thank you to you. <laughs> no thank you to you, Troy. Uh, no, of course, I'm having an amazing fucking time. An absolute blast. Milwaukee was amazing. I feel so lucky to have a second show, mostly because I want to play the mm -hmm, game mm -hmm, more. Mm -hmm. uh, Troy. But uh, no, I, I feel extremely lucky to be in St. Paul with all of you, so many of you. I'm having a great time, what else can I say? I had poutine last night, I had like a great hot dog. I'm having a great time. <laughs> poutine and hot dog, <laughs> that'll go in your memoir. The core food groups, poutine, <laughs> hot dog, <laughs> beer, I'm done. Yeah, right, what else do you need? Do you have a favorite moment from this weekend when you go back and, and tell all your friends and lovers? 
<laughs> You're many, many lovers. My Various many, lovers. Many, <laughs> many lovers. Your gentlemen callers and suitors. <laughs> Will you uh, say, my favorite part of the weekend well, was... Well, honestly, I thought my least favorite part of the weekend was going to be the drive from Milwaukee to St. Paul because mm. I was in the car with Troy and Joe. But that was actually quite fun. We had a great time. We really time. did. Goofing and gaffing the whole time. We stopped at a cool brewery. We mm -hmm. got some great brews. Yep. And uh, we ate some spicy chicken sandwiches. It was a great... Oh, and we were going to steal a goat. Yep. If you missed the... Uh, <laughs> if you missed cannon fodder. Yeah, cannon fodder. We this about... close to stealing a goat. My this one regret. Close. My one regret of the weekend. We yeah, my one regret. No, and today I got to go to the uh, science museum with Matthew and Skid and Joe. Yeah. Big science museum fans here tonight. <laughs> it's a cool museum. It yeah, was dude. cool. It's it's a smart crowd. It's a science yeah, crowd. This is, man. A si it's a STEM crowd. This is a STEM it's, heavy crowd. It's a crowd of learned doctors. <laughs> There's a doctor. That's a loud doctor. That's doc good. That's There's good. a loud doctor over <laughs> here. Crowd need, of loud right. doctors. You might need a doctor later. Doctor, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> calm it's just down, a monologue. Doctor. doctor, heal thyself. <laughs> <laughs> Sydney, uh, I'm so glad you're here. And uh, do you want to do this again sometime? Huh? What? Sorry, I wasn't. I wasn't listening. What's it? I don't worry about it. Right. Um, of course, of course, of course, of course. Yes, no, yes. No, I've rescinded the offer. All right. Um, but now I would like to introduce you to three men who, up until yesterday, thought a juicy Lucy was a sexy urban slang for anal sex. <laughs> Kids these days. Kids yeah. these days. <laughs> you know, I'll buy her dinner, see how things go. Maybe go the old juicy Lucy. <laughs> it's going to be that kind of show, folks. <laughs> yeah, buckle up. <laughs> you love him. <laughs> what? Matthew was devastated to found, find out what it really right. meant. He was, <laughs> I, was just, I was just so jazzed to use it in conversation, and I found out I was using it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, first up is, a, is the only man that wasn't cold last night walking the, the freezing streets of St. Paul because he's covered by a thick layer of fur that protects his doll-like extremities. Give it up for Matthew Capitacasa! <laughs> Matthew Capitacasa. You know, I googled this this morning. Did you know that in the gay community, you'd be considered an otter? <laughs> <laughs> It's true. In fact, I did know that. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. So cute. Sorry, fellas. He's married. <laughs> How are you, buddy? <laughs> did you have a good day today? <laughs> I had a great day. We learned about science. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we went to the science museum. We were very excited. Joe went off and saw a movie at the science museum while the rest of us looked at the exhibit, which was weird, but otherwise we got to... <laughs> I thought that's what you do. A, a live Tyrannosaurus came out and visited us. A real Tyrannosaurus Rex? A real Rex? Tyrannosaurus Rex. It was just a teenager. Okay. So it wasn't too large. But yeah. Not a big dinosaur guy, so I don't know. <laughs> Good for you. Um, I asked you a couple nights ago if you wrote a play about Milwaukee, what would the title be? What would your play about St. Paul be titled? Look in the mirror. Ooh. Because they're twins, right? So it's like, okay. Ah! That's deep. I saw a lot of like deep artistic nods in the audience. <laughs> this isn't a Matthew crowd, is it? <laughs> oh, come on! Thank you. I'm screwed. <laughs> You're not going to like these next few then. <laughs> Next up is a man who knows St. Paul better than any of us because he went to high school with him and Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what were the, the apostles like, Mr. Skid Ma? Skid! Skid! My buddy. I'm like four years older than you. 
<laughs> I, I had talked to people, it's just like, I thought you'd be way older. Like, they're expecting some wizened old bearded man. <laughs> Thank you for coming to Glass Cannon Live. <laughs> Can I get a ride back to the group home? <laughs> Kid, you're a, big, uh, you're a big sports guy like me. Did you know uh, it's been 31 years since a professional Minnesota sports team has won a championship? What? Were you aware of that, Skidmar? Yeah, I, I, was, I was aware of that. Uh, it was that. They, they came close. Yeah. Uh, a few times. Fran Tarkenton was a heck of a quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Dolman, big Chris Dolman fan. Uh, and I think uh, Carl Anthony Towns could be the ticket to the first championship ever. I'm sorry. Wow. I, I thought I could try to keep a straight face for that entire sentence. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, no, it's, 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 uh, it'll happen. You have great teams here, and uh, one day it'll happen. If only they gave a championship for terrible accents. <laughs> 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 Your trophy case would be loaded. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you, I, I'm going to say, I'll tell you what I appreciate here, which is that whenever he makes sports, sports jokes in other cities, shitting on their sports teams, at least 80% of the crowd is like, there's a professional sports team in this city. <laughs> <I know. laughs> I don't know. This, this crowd was like, boom, <laughs> like immediately. And I respect that. We got Ooh. sports fans here tonight. I love yes. it. I love it. Yes. And uh, sorry, real quick, before we move on to insulting Joe. Uh, I I'm did in want no to, rush. Yes, please. I need I a warm-up. <laughs> give you a little break to think of something even worse than what you had planned. Uh, I wanted to apologize real quick to uh, our friend Eric at Norse Foundry. I think I hurt his feelings by making fun of his mistake of uh, not giving Joe a die. So I just wanted, these dice are amazing. I love Norse Foundry dice. They are, these, the dice that he gifted us are spectacular. He did fuck up, but that's fine, because it was really funny. <laughs> and uh, I love the guy, we love him. We love all the guys at Norse Foundry, so. Did you give him a die? Did I give him a die? Yeah. I thought this was building to like a him? walk across the stage. Right, I felt like. Joe, the, you I owe Joe a die. No, I did. I left your dice at your station. Oh. Yeah. That's nice. Did you give him the amber? amber the amber it's one? An amber yes. die. Yeah, like the order, order, die. order of the amber die. That's why he said that was the one he initially intended for Ooh. you to have and wrote That's my name nice. by mistake. So Let's there you see go. if this starts chaining twenties. Like the famous amber die of your Well, we've been talking a lot about saints. So finally is a man who is no saint. Sure, he was an altar boy back in the day, but now he only worships at the altar of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> the gospel according to cheddar and white bread. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> I'll do it. That was good. He was the only altar boy in his church that wasn't molested by the priests because of how physically unattractive he was. Hello, St. Paul. Give it up for Joe O'Brien. <laughs> oh, God. I'm dizzy. I'm dizzy giving that one out to you. Don't touch him, Father. He reeks of sharp problems. I'm regretting giving you that little bit of extra time now. Yeah. That was your first mistake. How are you, Minnesota Joe? Oh, fantastic! I'm great, buddy. I'm fantastic. Yeah, I got nothing else. I'm sorry. No, no, I was going to say, exhausted. is that it? I'm exhausted. I'm You're red hot. red hot. Joe, tonight. how was your IMAX movie that you saw? <laughs> yeah. you the movie that you soloed. I went into the goddamn Minnesota Science whatever museum, and I'm like, oh, they have a dome IMAX, awesome. And Dinosaurs of Antarctica was starting in like five minutes. And I was like, I gotta catch that. Then I'll meet up with them in the, in the exhibits. And so I watched this 40 minute experience. That was awesome. Uh, and paid for the entire uh, exhibits ticket as well. 
came out was like, let me walk into the exhibits and find my friends. And they were all out and done with all the exhibits. And we're like, we're going to lunch. <laughs> so I never saw any of the museum. I just <laughs> paid to, saw an IMAX, and then went out to lunch. So yeah, it was pretty stupid in retrospect. <laughs> but. but the museum we found out as we were leaving in the gift shop were selling dice. Gaming dice. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. They had a whole beautiful case dice. Of, like, Polyhedral dice. Really nice. Some were very expensive, like quartz, rose quartz, and like these fancy dice. And Skid and I got, uh, we both got sets. Yeah, I got a set of macaron themed dice, like colored like macarons, which uh, my the, Samantha, like she loves making them. She's very good at making them, so I'm gonna give those to her. And I got a uh, dinosaur eye dice that have like a little dino eye, and I was rolling before, and first roll, Natty 19. So I'm gonna use that dice tonight. So thank you, Minnesota! Sound like loaded museum dice to me. <laughs> I know. Get that shit out of my game. <laughs> loaded museum dice racket. Notorious. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> a right. dirty loaded museum <laughs> dice racket. Uh, it was fun. It was like, what dice in a museum? It's just like, that's just crazy. Like, even 10 years ago, you would never have seen polyhedral dice in a museum gift store. They had a D100. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, it was so cool. So cool. Well, if you think that's cool. <laughs> then maybe you'll think it's cool to see our invalid behemoth in the flesh, kinda. Oh. Give it up for Grant Berger! Woo! Look at that handsome son of a bitch! Hi, St. Paul. It's uh, Grant Berger, otter enthusiast, reporting from <laughs> Juicy Lucy <laughs> HQ on top of my orthopedic chair built for a giant in a room that smells like cabbage farts. <laughs> so I, I hear you're hearing us better tonight, Grant. <laughs> yes, yes, I was able to uh, overhear you after munching through the several tons worth of cabbage that I had to live in. <laughs> Uh, just in time to get my flosser in so I look good on camera. <laughs> Grant, I know you performed alone in your room on Thursday night for two hours just to stay sharp. I think you should do it again tonight and record it and then just throw it out. We don't want you to lose your edge. Did we open up the glass can and OnlyFans to release that on Troy? Because it's going to get real weird. You jumped the gun. We're starting it tonight. <laughs> um... Buddy, are you feeling okay? You're fine, right? You're, you're back to normal? We just wanted to be safe, right? Oh, we just wanted to be safe. It was right on the cusp of guidelines. I didn't want to infect anyone else. That was my biggest concern. And uh, I hope everyone has a safe and lovely time this evening. Jealous of everything I've heard uh, and missing seeing so many people. Some people have already uh, messaged me, and I wish I could have met you tonight as well. Um, but you have a great time. Thank you for checking in with me, Troy. Boys, Sydney and St. Paul. Grant. Grant, we, we love you and we miss you. And listen, there's a, still a couple tickets left for Portland and Seattle if you want to come out and check it out. <laughs> I have a guy that can hook you up with like a discount. <laughs> yeah, okay. Not like now. See you, Grant. <laughs> See you He's tomorrow, buddy. Guy. Oh. She's hit. She's hit. She's hit. Uh, I have some goals for this evening that will be most likely impossible to achieve. But the only chance I have at achieving these lofty goals, Sydney, yeah? is by jumping into the recap right now. Sydney, take it to the recap. Nice, Sid. Oh. Purple lightning. You know when Grant plays the recap, I you, know. you don't see the fucking bar down the bottom. <laughs> Shut up. None of them could neither, see it. Neither did the crowd until you called it out. <laughs> yeah, no. I want him to know that he failed. We had meetings all week. <laughs> About that bar. Meetings all week. Play me some music and make it cool. Take a sip of my drink. Ooh. Ooh, that's some good recap music. 
I might just make this up as I go. <laughs> you got a lot of show to get to tonight, so I'll keep this brief. In metagaming terms, we are very quickly approaching the end of book two of the Strange Aeons Adventure Path. This is a six book adventure path that we will finish sometime in late 2038. <laughs> Book one had our heroes waking up in an asylum with no recollection of who they were or how they got there. The asylum had recently been taken over by the inmates as well as creatures from the dreamlands who seeped into the material plane when an earthquake ruptured the space-time continuum. <gasps> you already know this happened. <laughs> It's, yeah, the performance is so good, it's like I'm experiencing it anew. <laughs> Sound like my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Over the course of book one, the heroes freed the asylum from this hostile takeover and realized that they were placed there by a man named Count Hazerton Lowell's IV, the ruler of the nearby county. For you, imagine there was a ruler of Minneapolis. That's the nearby county. You got it? I got it. Okay. Yeah. Good, another good St. Paul burn. <laughs> so, after foiling the nightmare creatures in the asylum, book two has seen our heroes arriving in town to try and find out what their connection to this count was, as well as where the count is, because apparently he up and left town unexpectedly on some pseudo scholarly pursuit. This event caused two key things to happen, Skid. One, a government official known as a royal accuser was dispatched to the town to investigate Lal's disappearance. Among her team was a priestess named Winter Klexa, who the heroes met at the asylum in book one. Winter was sent to the asylum to investigate Lyle's connection to that place, and she got trapped there when the asylum fell to shit. While in town, our heroes discover that the royal accuser went missing, and when they try to meet up with Winter after leaving the asylum, Winter is also nowhere to be found. The second key thing is that when Laos left town, I'm sorry I bored you. <laughs> She's heard the recap before. Yeah, this is, just did it two nights ago, it's fine. It's like, it's like I know the recap, Troy. The second key thing is when Laos left town, he left his assistant in charge of his sta estate, a woman named Melly Sen. Melly Sen, throughout the hero's investigation, has been using her influence to recruit a cult of Hastur, the king in yellow, to kidnap people in town so that she could sacrifice them in honor of this great old one, hoping that a gateway between worlds could be created where Hastur would come to this world, lay it to waste, and allow her to rule among the ashes. Over the course of the past few shows, We've seen our heroes break into the Count's estate at Iris Hill that has been crawling with cultists and monsters. A couple shows ago, they found the dead body of the royal accuser. And two nights ago, in Miliwake, they also found Shaboing Winter Klaxa. The role of Winter Klaxa will be played by Sidney Emanuel this evening. In tonight's performance, the role of Winter Winter was on the brink of death, perhaps moments away from being the next cult sacrifice. After saving Winter and cutting her down from the third star stela that was hidden below Iris Hill, an ancient monument that predates human existence that the cult is using as a conduit to the world beyond the stars. They cut her down, they walk into the next room, and they found Melisen along with some foul, eldritch henchmen. And also, in the subpar city of Milwaukee, they confronted and killed Melisa. Huge! 
They now stand in a subterranean domed chamber surrounded by a, a mural of an alien city with a chorus of robed figures seemingly watching from the beyond. An enormous yellow sign mosaic on the floor wafts yellow mist from the floor to ceiling and the day seems to have been won, but there are still some unanswered questions. One, where in the blue fuck is the count? And two, is there anything or anyone here that knows how you are tied up with Lyles? And what is your connection to all of this? Among the inmates of the asylum that are connected to Lowell's, only Skid's character, Aldo, is still in action. Atticus, the rat folk wizard, is encased in amber for at least another six days. Mrs. O'Lady and Burl, the green loser, are dead! <laughs> and Halster, the war priest of Phrasma, has gone catatonic and is now safely tucked away in a sarcophagus <laughs> full of live rats. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot we did that. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Sorry, Grant. <laughs> Carefully swaddled in a cocoon of rats. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make a, a note to refill the sarcophagus as we walk fresh. by. That's fresh <laughs> rats. Refresh that. Fresh yeah. rats. Yeah. Some of them might crawl in his unconscious mouth and suffocate. Yeah. So we should replace <laughs> those at least. Yeah. And they might not be hungry anymore after having gnawed at his flesh the yeah, whole time. Yeah. You want to freshen that up? sometime during this sesh. If this cult leader Melly send you anything, she's not talking because she's dead. What do you do? Aldo, I think, despite, despite himself and knowing what has to be done here, I think he's fascinated by the mural and he just wanders into the room towards it in a daze just eyes wide looking at this urban, fantastical urban landscape and all the people in it. And he's just like staring at all the detail and he's just sort of giggling to himself as he does so. <laughs> just staring at it, taking it all in. Bungleby is gonna move to the corpse of Melly Sin and loot that shit. <laughs> First, let me put the X on her. Yeah. That means she's dead. He puts his foot on her nose and mouth, and his hand on the bolt between her eyes, and <laughs> rips the bolt out yeah. of her skull, tosses it down, and proceeds to see what she has on her. All right, she's got some stuff on her person, as it were. She has, you ready for this? While well, here, her lab loads up. <laughs> a ready. magical rapier. Okay. Ooh. A magical chain shirt. Ooh. A magical ring and a magical headband. Ooh. Juicy. One, okay. two, three, four, five scrolls. And a big fucking book. Oh. Oh. Big fucking book. <laughs> you got that? I got it. One big fucking book. Right. <laughs> I'd like to appraise the big fucking book. Mm. Give me an appraise check. Ooh, 21. It's priceless. <laughs> Priceless. Perhaps we can spellcraft the other items. Also, five scrolls? Aren't you supposed to use those in combat? <laughs> nice. Be careful, Matthew. <laughs> Book two ain't done yet. <laughs> Uh, she did not have time to because you rolled like rock stars in Milwaukee. Five scrolls. You know what? I'm just going to say you figure it out. I'm not going to have you roll spellcraft checks because 
there's 3,000 people here watching. <laughs> <laughs> we, we discussed backstage a, a no role play pledge to help you out. Tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Nobody likes to see role play live. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Let's just do math. <laughs> Let's all just do math yeah. in front of the people. It's just, <laughs> it's kept picturing us all just like staring at you and just waiting <laughs> for the next encounter. <laughs> <laughs> Clinically reading off dice rolls. Yeah. <laughs> it is a plus one rapier. Kay. A plus one chain shirt. Ooh. A ring of protection. Plus one. Yeah. Let's talk about the scrolls. We have a scroll of cure serious wounds. Mm. Winter recognizes it immediately because she's a cleric. Because I'm a cleric. <laughs> Did she write her name on it in crayon? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Property Thanks. of Winter. Yeah. Oh, that's mine. <laughs> a scroll of dismissal. Oh. And a scroll of sending. Darling, you send. send. <laughs> and two scrolls of restoration. Oh, oh huge! Wow. Yes! Yes! Wow. Excited to see you fight that one out. Okay. And lastly, the headband is a headband of inspired wisdom. <gasps> Ooh. Plus two. Oh. oh. Shit. Who's a wisdom-based character? I am Sheboygan. I, al <clears throat> I also am. You're temporary. <laughs> 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 no temps. She kneel. She kneels. You're an up-jumped NPC. Shut up. She kneels. <laughs> an up-jumped NPC. Sir, Sir Julie, you should. Not me. Although I, character-wise, it makes more sense. But you should. I, I, I can't. I can't. No, I literally can't. Troy won't let me. You should. I see. I shouldn't, of course. I hold, I hold on to it. I hold on to it tight. <laughs> no, take it. You, you, seem to, you seem to be holding on rather tightly. Oh, of course I am. Whoops. Enjoy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you feel a little wiser, Sir Julie. Let's talk about this book. You guys speak any languages that are cool? <laughs> Let's cut to the chase. Do you speak, does anyone speak jive here? Because <laughs> this 10 pound book is written completely in jive. <laughs> oh no. Oh God. <laughs> This is Colin Barbara Billingsley. See if <laughs> I just went to check on my Hero Lab, on my personal tab. It says, add languages known, one left. Oh! oh. <laughs> so, what do you need? I want you to pick one at random and see if it's right. <laughs> pick one at random and see if it's right. Uh, no, that's not going to be right. Come on. Come on! Ah! Yeah, I don't know. Uh. Druidic. None of you know what it says. <laughs> she was doing shit with druids. I, if, if, if Aldo, in the event that Aldo is distracted from the, the mural and called over to help, he says, ah, you know what? It's strange. I think I might have just the thing. Pulls out a little vial off of his bandolier, guzzles it, casting comprehend languages on himself. There it is. There it is. Seasoned veteran, Skidmar. You look at this book. It does weigh over 10 pounds. There's over 500 pages of parchment contained within. And the letters that just looked like gibberish and, gibberish and signs and hieroglyphics. Shut up. <laughs> I have to say a lot of words. Start to move on the page in a way that you can read. And the first thing you read is the title of the book, which is the Narcotic Manuscripts. Three people understood. What, the what? How the what? important that is. What's the title? The Narcotic 
manuscripts. Narcotic manuscripts. Yes. This was something that came up in Side Quest Side Sesh. It sounded familiar. Yeah. Oh, now you know about it. No, I don't. I just sounded familiar. How convenient. <laughs> it's written in Aklo. And as you start to finger through it, you see that it's a book talking about portals, conjuration magic. There's knowledge about these flying polyps that evidently created the star Stele in town. There's knowledge about Yithians, knowledge about other creatures associated with the gods of the Elder Mythos. You think in your infinite intelligence, Aldo, that if you spent some time with this book, or maybe not you, maybe a, a, a shitty rat folk wizard who spent time with it, would gain knowledge and spells? If only you knew such a creature. Hmm. Damn it. It's a shame, really. <laughs> By the way, Nikonic is not spelled the way you'd expect. <laughs> <laughs> It took me two Googles to get there. <laughs> Is that it? Is that it? <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking my mic smells funny. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody weird performed last night. <laughs> it's that kind of funny smell that you can't stop smelling. <laughs> oh, what was your kink? All right, Winter asks if anybody... <laughs> Winter says, uh, while this is all going on, Yeah. Is everyone okay? Does anyone need any healing? I don't think I can do that, but... I am a cleric, but I have a <laughs> limited... <laughs> you have to understand, I have a limited amount. You have to understand, I have an oil can of beer in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm this unable beer? to perform. I <laughs> feel like a child. I have to like use two hands to hold it, and I feel stupid drinking it on stage. It's That's a so, pony keg, basically. It's so this. good, though. Um, yeah. Thank you, Wooden Legs. Thank you, Wooden Legs. Dead Thank you, Wooden Legs. Seth Thank in the you. crowd tonight. Uh, but no, Winter says, uh, how's everyone doing? That was rough. I'm very badly hurt. I could use some healing as well. I'm fine. No one asked. <laughs> no one asked you. <laughs> so Uncle B will reach into his vest and pull out a wand, uh, and similar to Aldo, he also begins to like spend a little bit more time looking at these murals, and he gets lost for a second in them, and he just sort of pulls this wand out. And he's like, "Here, here you go." and holds it out to you, but he's just staring at this wall with this smoky sort of city scape with these masked figures looking at him. And it's familiar to him. He holds out this wand. Thank you, Bungleby. Are you all right? Do you need healing? And he just starts to walk toward it, not responding to you. Okay. And uh, <laughs> and I walk to Sir Julie, who I know is taking the brunt of everything. Um, Sir Julie, this is a, a wand of, what was it, Bungleby? He's busy. Uh, I believe it's a Cure Light Wounds. Would you like a tap tap? I would very much so, yes, thank you. Tap tap. And that's how I cast my spells, so you're healed. <laughs> <laughs> Straight out of Are the you book. a good witch or a bad witch? Al <laughs> <laughs> and she clicks her heels together and they're shiny and red. Um, uh, Aldo. It's canon. <laughs> it's canon now. All black, black hair. She's beautiful. Look red heels. Sexy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> gingham, gingham cloak. <laughs> denim. All denim cloak and it's heavy as shit. <laughs> She's like, is anybody else hot as shit down here? Oh my god. Where do you guys buy your cloaks? Because this thing sucks. <laughs> Gotta go to a cloakery when we're back in Thrustmore. Um, Gotta go hit the cloakery. <laughs> Haberdashery? I don't know. Uh, oh, the cloakroom. Try the cloakroom in town. They sell the great deals 50% off cloaks. Aldo, do you need a tap tap? Yes, indeed, I do. Tap tap. Oh, uh, thank you. That's much tap, better. Tap, and I tap tap myself. Does Bungle Bee need any heal? You were invisible. Do you need any? 
I, I put the wand back in your pocket. Oh, thank you. No, I'm fine. Okay. And I'll turn back around as you distract him from it. And uh, he thinks, or he says, this was the one who was looking over the house, right? While the Count is away. So, with her gone, the house is ours. And he kind of smiles and bites his lip, like the side of his lip. Let's go upstairs. Clear the place out and get the fuck out of here. What? We... No! We can't... We can't just... Millicent... Millicent is evil. She trapped me down here. What if there are others? What if there are people who need our help? We can't just leave. All right. Fine. But still, they must be upstairs, right? Well, what's in this big, scary, yellow room? Nothing. She walks forward. Nothing of interest. She walks into the room. Perception check. <laughs> Stay out of there! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we just do a... Can we can take, we take, 20, yeah. take 20 on the room? We'll take, 20. Yeah, take 20 on the room, and it's just... Uh, this chamber seems to be a, a place out of time. Mm. You wonder if, like, Lowell's ancestors were all devotees of Hester or of the unspeakable world beyond or if this is just Melisande's redecorating. Um, obviously the yellow sign on the floor is oppressive and that mist rising up gives the whole room a, a feel that reminds especially Aldo of that initial nightmare when you woke up in the asylum. Yeah, this is all the landscape, the mural, very familiar to Aldo as well for sure. But you search the room, and there seems to be nothing there. You have, as far as you can tell, foiled Melisen's plans. Exactly. But Aldo, unlike your allies, you're smart. <laughs> Correct. And Correct. you know that the great old ones, the elder gods, the outer gods, they don't get bothered by a blip like Meli Sen passing because for them they think the takeover of the world is inevitable if anything this is just a, a minor annoyance and you more so than anyone still need to know why why were you involved why were you working for the Count and there's nothing here to give you answers the death of Meli Sen is naught but a pebble dropped in a great river. There is much work to be done. Are mortals even capable of defying the gods, the old gods in this way? I think the burglar may have a point. We should go up. Yes, yes, exactly. Agreed. We have, the, we have little time. Perfect. Let's go. All Touch right. nothing in the house. Who knows what evil is contained in the <laughs> objects here? For your own safety, no, you no. must leave all the artifacts exactly where they are. She's right. No, 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 no. That was not our understanding. The, 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 the Lady Marmalade. Until is very we report demanding. it to the authorities, we should touch nothing. I don't think that's very fair. I came down with you, helped with this, whatever it is evil destruction of the world, whatever you say, but my lady deserves the artwork that is owed to her, and I believe it may be upstairs. You're absolutely right. Fill out an invoice, and we'll submit it. <laughs> to the designated uh, representative of the Count. Yes, we'll make a thorough accounting of all valuables in the estate, hand it over to the proper authorities, and perhaps if you make a claim, Many, many years from now, you may see a prophet. <laughs> <laughs> and so you go back upstairs. Should we do restoration? Oh, oh, yes. But yeah, so the minute like his cat's grace wears off, like, oh, he like drops the book. He's he less, falls. It comically falls backwards into this pool of water. In the <laughs> <laughs> so you only have two scrolls of restoration, and several of you are down. Uh, obviously, Halster is out of commission, so you don't have to waste anything on him. <laughs> it's the best. But how many uh, <laughs> neg-levs are you down, Aldo? 
Uh, well, I'm down two negative levels, and and I've got the the dexterity drain as well. Does one casting of restoration just bring you back to normal? Or? No, it's a die roll. Okay. Uh, I no, think it's restoration like a- cures all temp- temporary ability damage and restores all points permanently drained from a single ability score. Ah, okay. It also eliminates any fatigue. Um, okay. I was thinking of Lester, maybe. Uh, oh, so okay. it's the perfect thing for you. So you should yeah. take one, and Sir Julie, you're down a negative level, right? I'm one negative level. Okay, do you have any drain? Uh, I do not have any drain. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Winter is the only one that can do it, but restoration is not a spell level that you can cast. Yeah, I only have lesser restoration. So we're going to need a use magic John. No, uh, no, no, I don't believe so. No. You need a caster level check. That's what I meant. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wait, so what am I adding to that? I'm rolling and then... My, your, just my caster level? Your cleric level, yeah. Six, okay. This one's for Matthew. <laughs> we'll go left to right. That's a natural two for an eight. I'm so sorry. I mean, you might have succeeded. I don't know what DC, the DC is. DC equals the scroll's caster level plus one. Plus one. Oh, so I six. Maybe not. Well, maybe. Yeah. Seven, eight, yeah. Yeah, because I think if you're Doing a seventh math. level cleric, you can cast yeah. restoration. Right? That is so true. you got it exactly. So you got it exactly. Yeah! yeah! A natural two, so only a natural one will wow. fail. If you are, uh, if you have the spell on your list yeah. and you use a scroll that is just like above you, the like really the only way you fail is a natural one. Yeah. It is supposed to be pretty easy. So stupid. Thank for asthma. Okay. Thank you, Winter. <laughs> You're welcome, she says extremely confidently. Next roll. <laughs> this is my good die. Natty 18. Yeah, there ah. we go, there we go. And she touches your foreheads, pats you on the head. Oh. Well, good Da-da. for you. So, Aldo, Now, it also undoes yeah. a negative level. But. Does it also do it, or does it do it instead of the ability? Like, do you have to pick one? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. Uh, except that it also dispels temporary negative levels or one permanent. Now, you haven't rolled that Yeah, check. they're still temporary. Yeah, they're yeah. still temporary, so it just psh, gonzo. Wow, okay. So you're good. You guys are great. If it was permanent, you'd need to have a, the material component of diamond dust worth a thousand gold pieces, which you do not have. However, Grant being sick will force him to need that diamond when he rolls it in Portland. <laughs> you only have deck strain, right, Aldo? Uh, I have some, well, I have some con damage, but it's temporary, so that should be lifted also. Restoration cures all temporary ability damage, and it restores all points permanently drained from, from a, a single, single ability score. Yep. But he, if he, had, but he has drain and damage, so he's okay. No, you don't. I believe you have drain. Con drain. Oh. That creature did drain. Last uh, two days ago, you got the con drain. From, oh, I had oh, it as from damage. the vampiric. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to pick. Do you want right. to heal your dex or heal your con? Uh, I'll definitely take the dex. Okay. This will be Aldo's last episode. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the map. You have come back upstairs. Uh, Halster, I'm just going to, for the audience, uh, put an X over him because he is in the sarcophagus covered in rats. G10! Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. What Wait does G10 minute. say? Yeah, oh, we yeah. turned to G10. Your thoughts now? This wasn't the map I wanted you to go to. <laughs> G10. What have you to say now, G10? Surely we've impressed you with our, with our uh, accomplishments thus far. I have been watching you scamper about and determine the magical properties of the items you have found. (laughs) You have healed your friends, young priestess. Clearly your heart is pure. However, I don't like you. (laughs) (laughs) So on a personal level, (laughs) I'm out. And G10 leaves. G10, oh. no! G10, no! Return to us! 
Surely after all your time watching, you would have developed a sense of objectivity. He comes back and he says, what, what did you say? <laughs> I accused you of being biased, Watcher. How can one who has a vast and unknowable intelligence from another world be so petty and personal? I, 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 I had left. I didn't hear you. No, I'm still done with you. And he walks away. <laughs> no, no I, I, I still don't like you. I still don't care for you as people. <laughs> and G10 is gone from this adventure. God oh, damn it. No. Scan over to the real map that I wanted you to go to. Back in the creeps. Creeps. Back in the creeps. Uh, how See, far uh, gone is Halster's corpse? Um, yeah, I did put an axe over him. I guess that's not really appropriate. Let's just put a rat swarm. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we, go. <laughs> we we grab a pitcher and we go over to like the rat machine, like an ice machine in a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Scoops him up and just refill the, the sarcophagus. Oh there my go. god, you like push the thing in and they're like falling <laughs> yeah. and scrambling. Like. <laughs> There we go. Just throw those guys on. Awesome. There we go. Oh, yeah. oh. Perfect. <laughs> Say what you will about Galarian. Nine dollars still buys you a hell of a lot of rats. <laughs> when you came downstairs, you walked directly by a uh, a little room in the corridor leading to the uh, this area here that I'm signaling. Uh, there's a door to the south, but also to the north of the room that had that little uh, lantern on the floor. That could that corridor continues to the north as well. I so you've got a, a couple different corridor. options. What? I take down, a peek down the corridor to the north. Take a little uh, gentleman's peek. You see a room Ooh. and a corridor that stretches to the east, uh, and then it continues stretching to the north. Let me give you some flave text. Looks like a storage room. There are two large wooden shelving units on the west and east walls, holding many small chests, caskets, and several loose objects. In the middle of the floor. <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> loose objects. On in the, the, floor, middle of the floor, middle floor, in the middle several floor. chests. What's the problem? Lies a wooden coffin. Ooh. Oh. Oh. The shelves look like they're litter littered with mundane personal belongings. You see clothing, boots, equipment, and most of it is covered in blood. 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 Almost all of the items are damaged by water, moisture, or combat. And the coffin looks like it's been kind of fashioned into a makeshift bed. Perhaps the keeper of the yellow sign that you fought was using this as his king-size bed. Uh, cautiously, judiciously, mm -hmm. and with an aura of goodness, Sir Julius steps into the room. <laughs> you were always meant for a paladin, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Step into the room, and the light shining off of your great sword continues down this hallway to the east and also continues to the north. To the north! To the north. Um, can we do a quick search of the room? Any requisite detect magics to see what's going on? I don't see any magic. However, a thorough search among the sundries reveals what might be the apparel of a public official in a silver seal matrix. You see a, a bell-shaped object with Thrushmore's crest engraved on its flat bottom and a ring for a, a string or ribbon at the top. You think that this is something that perhaps a magistrate would wear? Oh, it's the magistrate's notary public stamp. We take it with us. Yes, you think that Cecadia Rents at the Sleepless Detective Agency would be very interested in this, and if Magistrate Paget Tillman had any friends or family, they would like to know that he is most likely gone. Right. 
Room stretches to the north and to the east. What do you do? North? Yes, go, go to the north. Go to the north. North, go to the north. Go to the north. 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 You continue moving to the north. And you see a door. Actually, is the door to the north? You see the door to the north. Door to the north. Bungleby, might you assist with this door to the north? <laughs> yes, immediately. Apply your burglar's tricks in the door to the north. <laughs> 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 he first takes a knee, bows to it, puts his head in the crook of his elbow. <laughs> the door in the north. <laughs> and we'll roll to check for traps. Uh, come on, dude. 28. 28, huh? It's a pretty damn good roll. What was that again that you rolled? Whatever the traps DC is. That's what I rolled. Uh, 28. 28 on that door. So Bungleby steps up past Sir Julie and examines this door and hits the perception DC. Exactly. Oh, yes! Yes! And you see a glyph, a glyph not unlike the glyph Uh. that Sir Julie set off two days ago in Milwaukee. Joe. Oh. Who says your luck is bad? Uh, who? who <laughs> besides who, them. Yeah, besides who aside everyone, from everybody? Who says your luck uh. is bad? Who says the person who books tickets for the coldest game in the St. Paul Saints <laughs> history <laughs> has bad luck? It was. I never, plan, I never plan outings for the whole crew in cities. And this time I was like, St. Paul Saints. It's a ball game. It's April. We're going. And it was 21 degrees. (laughs) And I was like, I'm going to that game, goddammit. And I sat there in my chair, just freezing. (laughs) And around the sixth inning, the announcer came over. He's like, ladies and gentlemen, just want to let you know, it is the coldest game in St. Paul Saints history. Ball the, club's been around for more than a century and a half. Yeah, yeah. That, that ball club has been around for 150 years. In Minnesota. In Minnesota. <laughs> and the 37 people that were there with me were like, Woo! There it is. Paul Joe. Paul Joe. I never thought it would happen. St. <laughs> Paul Joe. What a shitty saint. <laughs> yes. so I, I want to see a stained glass window of him holding a block of cheddar. <laughs> Halo around the... <laughs> never you lose cheddar. You don't even know who St. Paul is. <laughs> you think him and Jesus went to Catholic school together. You're, you couldn't be more wrong. Learn your history, Catholic <laughs> schoolboy. <laughs> Sorry. History. I cheated on my Catholic school tests. <laughs> <laughs> what do we? Uh, you found a you found a trap. You want to disable it? No, nah, no. Nah, he opens the door. <laughs> uh, yeah, he will attempt. He will t- attempt to disable a device. Okay, if you fail by five or more, you set the trap off. I'm Winter. saying that. For Cast the guidance. Audience. Guidance. Oh. oh. Well, if it isn't Cantrip McGee over she, here. She gives you a little noogie, and she casts Guidance. That's how Winter oh. does it. <laughs> Ooh, Son of a cannon. Good. A somatic noogie. Okay. Somatic noogie. Are there somatic components to that noog? <laughs> Will you roll a d20? All right. <laughs> I was looking something very specific. What are you looking up? You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> You'll all see. see. Crushed it. Oh. I started off with a Russian Imperial Stout. Oh. So I need a little more time on the math. <laughs> uh, that is a 32. Oh. 
You <laughs> You uh, Disable you know it. The trash Yeah the magical oh. glyph The glyph of warding just <laughs> Dissipates And you can now Open the door Without fear of trap Do you open the do you I'll open the door. Open the door. God hey! damn it. Forgot you have to say everything in a role playing game. You open the door and you see an ice cellar. <laughs> and he says, ice for sale. <laughs> Get your ice here. No, he doesn't. It's spelled C E L L A R. That's funny. <laughs> yes. That's a joke. Yep. I get it. I get jokes. Are you a professional comedian? Well, I, I used to be. I'm very tired. Yes, I'm retired now. It's a the it's a bitterly cold room though. Okay. The walls of the bitterly cold room are clad with raw wooden boards, and there are many blocks of hazy ice and wooden crates of various sizes stacked near the walls. The ice cellar looks like it's insulated by a one foot wide interspace filled with hay and sawdust between the stone walls and the wooden cladding boards. You also see a ladder to the northeast leading up. Oh. Uh, He will start to creep into the room stealthily uh, so I'll, I'll roll stuff uh, for shits and gigs. Oh my god, thirty-five! Oh, nice, <laughs> crushing it right now, St. Paul. Where did Bungleby go? Yeah, he's just gone. Yeah, he goes under one of the tables. <laughs> you sneak into the cold, cold room. No one sees you. And I will do a uh, take twenty on perception. There's no one in there. Is there anything of value in here? But there is a ladder. Ice is pretty valuable. Yes. Depending on the era. He'll go to the ladder. He, and he'll look up. What does he see? He looks up and he sees a trap door in the ceiling leading someplace above you. Anybody have dungeoneering? No. No, we established this in Milwaukee. A terrible party. Yeah. I do. Six. <laughs> <laughs> what was your bonus? Four. <laughs> yes. It was, it's a natural two. He looks up. I have, I have no idea where this goes. Check Perhaps we should turn back. Check it out, thief. My name is Bungle. Thief. <laughs> Check it out, thief. Her shadow just like over him. Uh, all right. He will begin to climb the ladder. He'll get to the top to the trap door and okay. check it for traps. Okay. As is tradition. Sure. Winter spots Bungleby at the bottom, afraid he's going to, like, electrocute himself and fall back down. (laughs) Gently cradling Bungleby's buttocks. (laughs) 34. Oh, Oh, nice. Damn, What is happening? (laughs) Use up these rolls now when they don't matter. Let me show you what you see, you son of a gun. You actually open the door oh. and move past the. See the shit to the northwest there? The northeast. Oh. Keep, go, oh. keep going up. Keep going up. You're in the blood room. Oh, oh whoa. Wow. Just north of the shit room, you find yourself uh, opening a trap door into this kitchen area where oh, all those house. Kuru cannibals were. Oh. Had you searched that thoroughly, you would have found a ladder leading to the ice cellar and leading below Iris Hill. But instead, you went the uh, long way. Sorry. (laughs) As of right now, it appears to you there are only a few areas left that you have not explored. I'll go back to the basement. There is the east here leading from the storage room. And then there are the upper floors of Iris Hill. And this room down here to the west. And this room down here to the west. That one, yes. Don't forget that one. Must must be a closet of some kind. Let's check out 
I'll just we'll dash back out of the ice cellar and look down the hall, this eastern hallway. You look down the eastern hallway. Give me a perception check, Sir Julie. Okay. Uh, 17. Oh boy. Keep moving. <laughs> I'll do a perception check. <laughs> For traps. Okay. 34. Wow. <laughs> Julie. 34. Do you move past Sir Julie to be able to extend the yes. uh, your view into this? Sir Julie, wait. Let me go first to make sure there's nothing on the floor as there was in Melisin's room. Of course, you're right. We'll move forward, checking for traps along the way. Sure. I don't need another roll. Just move forward. Okay. He moves forward. Okay. Oh, he moves forward. And this is what you see. You see a little room that looks like there is a well in the middle of it. Ooh. And in fact, if you relate this information to Sir Julie, I see a well. Sir Julie immediately remembers this sounds very similar to the well that Atticus found <gasps> when he was attacked by Shut all those up. rats. Oh, back yes. off, back off, back off. <laughs> so you push Bungleby towards that room and then slowly back <laughs> And slowly <laughs> back off. <laughs> Come Splash. and get it. Well, this this must have been the this must have been the source of the rat machine, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's rad. It all yes. makes sense. We back off and don't engage the rat and the rat king. Yes, and in fact, amazing. Just to, there are so many ways we could have gotten into yeah. this. Right here, I'll give you this now, just so you'll enjoy this. this is some great map design. Uh, go up a little bit on the map here, because you'll get a kick out of this as players. There is where you fought the elder. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. wow. So you could have been here months ago. Wow. Wow. Boy, (laughs) aren't we so embarrassed. Egg on our face. (laughs) Egg on our face. But yes, you couldn't, you couldn't, because Atticus was the only one that could really uh, uh, adequately sneak down there. Shut up. (laughs) Atticus uh, is a verb now. uh, And you got like filth fever and the plague (laughs) while doing it. (laughs) So it wasn't like, come on, guys, it's safe. He still has the plague. He still has the plague. Bubonic plague. Right. He's got the plague, motherfucker. All right. Uh, yeah, follow, so you don't want to go down there. You don't want to go down there. No, no, no. Follow me, Sir Julie says, and she goes down to the door of the west and kicks it in. The, oh. Whoa. The door to the west. All right. Door to the west. Door to the west. You, you open the... <laughs> Diane West. Diane West. <laughs> door to the Diane West, and sure enough, she's standing right there. Oh, no. I love your work. <laughs> and she says, what? I love your work. What is your favorite movie that I've done? Well... How can one choose? It's a riddle. Uh, Wrong Edward, answer. Edward Scissorhands. Edward Scissorhands is Edward a great example. Parenthood? Incorrect. The correct answer was Hannah and her sisters. Oh, damn. Crikey. And a fireball explodes <laughs> oh, no. from her chest. <laughs> <laughs> you just see a, an empty cell. Uh, there's two heavy wooden pallets. <laughs> Sir Julie's having visions again. <laughs> there's it's some manacles. Me. Yeah, she's talking to some. So she's talking to someone called Diane Weiss. Diane. I don't see anything. Diane, no. I really appreciate your work, extending more than four decades in Hollywood. Really, your longevity inspires us all. And there's no one in the room. Winter. Bungleby is slowly turning to winter. Winter feels Sir Julie's forehead and, and she says, Sir Julie, there's there's no one in here. Pay your respects to Ms. Weist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gods. It's, uh, it's all right, Winter. We just, we try to humor her in these situations. Yes, Miss Weist. You are a very accomplished person. Actor. Actor. Yes, actor. actor. Yeah, of oh, course. Yes. Loved of course. All of your plays. Brava. Brava, Thoroughly. indeed. Yes. We will leave you now. Uh, Go forth and perform again. So Julie says to the empty chamber. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's manacles hanging off the wall. We're so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Visions of Diane Weiss. <laughs> that could be the name of the chapter. Right? <laughs> That'd be really good. Visions. 
North by Northwest. <laughs> North by Northwest. <laughs> Weast of Eden. Weast of Eden. Weast of Burden. All right. We do this all day. You see... Go Weast, young man. <laughs> Fantastic Weast and where to find it. Weast side story. Okay. There you go. Hey! hey! hey we'll be here all night. <laughs> We're going home tomorrow. Uh... <laughs> It looks like there was a sign of struggle in this room. And in fact, Winter, when you see this room, you realize you were chained up in here recently. Oh. And they took you out to tie you to the Star Stila uh, moments away from probably being sacrificed. You So you spent time with Ms. Weiss. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> How oh, to be a fly on the wall in that yes. room. <laughs> yes. yes, I would often talk to her about her roles. We would do scenes together. It, oh. it put her at ease in these troubling, troubling times where we were chained to the wall of this room. I just got chills thinking about you reciting the words of the great many writers that you, she, in, in the, of the many parts she's performed. She's gone, Sir Julie. She left. Oh. <laughs> You've missed her, Sir Julie. She sends her best. Indeed, you're right. She says she'll write soon. Oh, that's very good to hear. <laughs> Winter, shall, shall we proceed? Winter <laughs> relays the information about the room to the group and says, we were held here. That's it. I want to know what happened to the no role play policy. I know. We were so, we really wanted to move quickly tonight. It was a tonight. very clear <laughs> You spent 30 directive. minutes talking to Diane Weiss. Off the rails. <laughs> a non-existent Diane Weiss. A non-existent Diane Weiss. Allow me to clarify. <laughs> Listen, a two-time Academy Award winner, <laughs> Diane Weiss, shows up in your game. You engage. <laughs> You're not wrong. Don't speak. All right, you're done with this floor. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I was wondering. Let's go upstairs, you time wasters. Yeah. Uh, you're back. You're back upstairs. Go down, Joe. Go down. Where is the room with the rug? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what I got to do? I got to put old Winter here, because Halster is permanently dead. I'll get rid of him. And I will... Pachunk deleted. I will add a little <laughs> bit of winter. Nozzle. Is he in here? A little bit of winter on the map. <laughs> no, Ichabod Douche nozzle, nozzle is not here. Do you, do you think Halster, when he returns, will have been transformed in some sort of, into some sort of like rat superhero a la Catwoman in Batman Returns? Oh, yeah. One can only wonder. <laughs> and here there were stairs going up. There were, there were stairs. All right, so this is what you have here. There are stairs going up from this room. You chose to go uh, through the secret door underneath Ichabod Douche Nozzle. Any, f- <laughs> any first timers here tonight? Um, uh, in the room covered with multiple people's feces, <laughs> there is also a staircase going up. Let's avoid that room. Let's for the avoid moments. that room. I agree. Sydney is like, I'm out of here. She left. That's the room that Big P is uh, passed out after slipping on the feces and hitting his head on the dining room table. But I can only imagine he's incredibly satisfied after his uh, interlude with Ichabod. Are you going upstairs from yes. this yes. room yes. or from the poop room? From this room. We're this not room. going back in the poop room. <laughs> That's on you. All right. Let's see where F3 leads. <laughs> if you, if, Joe, if you scroll the map over just a bit, you'll see that Ichabod Douche Nozzle is having some sort of tryst in the forest. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> what are you doing, Ichabod? <laughs> you what just, is he doing out there? You just see him fucking a rabbit. <laughs> He's... He's <laughs> making... He's free. It's beautiful. Making sweet love to an elm. (laughs) (laughs) Whilst playing the flute. (laughs) I hope he he uses protection. I hear there's a bad case of Dutch elm disease going around. (laughs) You're on fire, dude. (laughs) All right. Um, 
It's kind of cover for your map work. There it is. <laughs> Go down, 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 Joe, down. <laughs> now, roll over. Oh, 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 whoa, oh, whoa. Oh. 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 Keep going, keep going. Why is he juicy? Oh, your your joke earlier makes it a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Troy, while you're while you're doing this, Joe, I'm gonna get some of that stout that you have. <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh, this is a bad idea. <laughs> uh, listen, we're not there yet, but we're not there yet, but we we uh, I really want to go long tonight. But in order to do that, y'all need to keep drinking because <laughs> I want that bar uh, to just have the best night ever. Um, there's a lot to, to go uh, tonight, and Diane Weiss took up far too long. <laughs> so you come up Man, the if stairs. I, if I had a dollar for every time I heard that one. Right now. We've got a long way to go tonight, and Diane Weiss took up too much time. Too much air time. <laughs> We gotta keep moving. You come up the stairs and you see a door. I open it. You open the door. <laughs> Great. Oh no, the stout. <laughs> Great work. All right, you see a long John fucking way. corridor. Ooh. John Look at this. Way. You got doors to the left of you, doors to the right of you. Here I am. And you're the only in door the in town. Uh, it to be Buffett fans. Let us be systematic about this. I listen at the door to the left, the first door. You listen to the door to the left. And you hear nothing. But you didn't roll a perception check. I, liter- I just I, did. Literally just did. What did you roll? Uh, 17. How would I know that? I was that- waiting for my moment. Joe watched me roll the die. You hear I nothing. thought you were being amazing in your predictive abilities. Because I saw his shitty roll. And you went, <laughs> you hear nothing. Sometimes regardless of what you roll. I give the same answer. And you hear nothing. Great sword in hand. I turn the doorknob and open. Clock, clink. You open the door. Oh, man. You see a little tiny bedroom. Looks like it used to belong to a child. Oh. <gasps> oh. Have and we seen this room depicted in a painting? Let me finish. Oh. Okay. There is a thick layer of dust covering most of the furniture in this room and a single wooden chair. The bed looks like it hasn't been used in years. It's made perfectly, thick layer of dust, even on the bed itself. The only thing that looks disturbed in the room is the wooden chair, which you can see has the imprint in the dust of a body that looks like it sat there recently. Whereas everything else in the room, from first glance, looks completely undisturbed. Like, undisturbed for years. Was this Lal's bedroom as a child? Hmm. So, perhaps he came back here to experience some memory, come to terms with some aspect of his horrific past it's possible shall we move on yes i do not want to go in that room yes <laughs> the chair seems this, ominous. the chair is bothering me close. very very creepy close the thank you close the door there's a door directly to your right but then there's two other doors to the north let's do the one to the right and we will roll dice to listen at the door okay roll that dice I don't know. It doesn't have to be me. <laughs> Do it. It really doesn't have to be me. I could roll. <laughs> <laughs> we both listen. Na- natural 20. Wow. Yes, Sid. Wow. Feels like a wasted roll, but yes, I listen really well. <laughs> What's your total uh, perception? That's going to be a 20. Uh, what's my per- 25. You hear nothing. I open the door. 
Then move your fucking character up there. Okay, I move. <laughs> now I open the door. Winter Klaxa opens the door, and you see what appears to be the master bedroom. Ooh. Ooh. It is decorated in a pseudo Kadiran style. Oh. With Exotic. I don't intricate. know what that is. Yes, there is. I don't know what that is. Because are... I'm not a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, nerd. Describe it to me. <laughs> nerd! Listen to yourself, LaValle. <laughs> In a pseudo Kadiran style. <laughs> I didn't write this. <laughs> there are intricate Kadiran patterns carved in the wood paneling. You see a sumptuous four-poster bed with a minaret-like canopy sitting against the southeastern wall. Mm. I want to know if Paizo wrote sumptuous or if you <laughs> wrote sumptuous. Because I have a feeling I know the He's answer. looking at his notes. <laughs> Paizo. All right. The furniture <laughs> in this... Kadiran style room, Sydney, mm -hmm. includes an ebony writing desk and a large L shaped armoire. Uh, I think, assuming this is Laos's bedroom, Winter will walk inside and check the ebony writing desk for a journal, a diary, something of importance. Winter walks in. Sir Julie accompanies her. Sir Julie accompanies her, and as you do, you both see hanging on the wall like a, a, a little peg is a long great coat, a long dark great coat that you didn't see until you walked into the room. It looks pretty worn out, but Sir Julie and Winter enter the room and go up to the ebony desk. What is Aldo and Butterbean? What's your name? <laughs> Butterbean. Butterbean. What does Aldo and Butterbean do? <laughs> Butterbean slips into the room. <laughs> and uh, 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 he is looking around the walls uh, for art, for things of value. You're looking around for art. Uh, what you notice is that the Kadiran decor, Sydney doesn't notice this, but the rest of you notice that. What it does it look like? It what looks is Kadiran. <laughs> and it also <laughs> looks like it was added later. <laughs> A belligerent. <laughs> PFSGM. <laughs> it looks Kadira. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to Google it. You know what? Thanks, but no thanks. I'm going to Google it. Google it's it. like uh, Istanbul ish. Uh, Not Constantinople. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. That's yeah. all I wanted. Thank yeah. you. In my defense, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> However, it looks like it was added later because it doesn't match the rest of the decor. So maybe Meli Sen was using the master bedroom and wanted to spruce it up with some Istanbulian art. It's a crude example. Not Constantinople. Not Constantinople. Not Constantinople. <laughs> Sorry, it's not our business. Nobody's, but. It's nobody's business, but. The Turks. Do all four of you walk into the room? Yes! Yes! yes. Give me a perception check. Dummies. Natural one. Mm. <laughs> Shit. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. I absolutely filthy 32. Oh, oh disgusting. Oh. A slightly less filthy 28. Ooh. Some good rolls. A couple things are going to happen. Oh. First thing is, as... Winter and Sir Julie start to walk into the room and Aldo and Butterbean are shortly behind them. You hear what sounds like a woman singing. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Aldo. <laughs> Not good. Aldo grabs Winter by the shoulder and says, Channel! Channel, Channel now! now! Winter channels. Winter starts channeling positive energy and she counter sings. Oh. 
Roll for initiative. Yeah, baby! Roll, 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 roll for initiative! Are we having fun, St. Paul? Oh, Sydney the cleric all day long. I'll take it. Let's do it. Winter, what did you roll for initiative? Uh, not good for what I said I was doing, but uh, that's a 10. Oh. Slowly. Aldo. Uh, also a 10. Also oh. a 10. Who's got the higher initial bone? How about I, you? A plus six. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Right. You're not going to believe this. No. I also rolled a 10. What? What? I've got What's a your bone? I've got a two. Plus zero. Okay, two. Oh, this is exhausting. This, this could be the best moment in the history of the network. Joe, what'd you roll? <laughs> can't do it. I can't lie. Eight, 18. I rolled an eight. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, here's the thing. I mentioned that a couple things were going to happen as fun as your flavorful channel was. You all failed the perception check to act in the surprise round. That everybody failed? A 30? Yep. 32? Yep. Wow. DC 38. Oh. Are you kidding me? Why even, why even why make a DC? Why would you even put so there, that in the book? There can't. isn't a character built to see that. Just a natural 20. Sounds like a you problem. <laughs> just, just say it's not gonna happen. Like, why yeah, I know. See? Like, why would you put near <laughs> the bed? You see the disembodied head of a beautiful woman appear, and hanging from her severed head are the entrails that would be uh, connected to a body if there was a body there. Think Sub-Zero's fatality oh. in the original Mortal Kombat, but much, much grosser. She appears, <laughs> an explosion of golden glittery particles no. Bursts around you. Give me a save. <laughs> the save. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to be more specific. That I want you to <laughs> roll. <laughs> Will. A will save. Will save. Well, okay. oh, I thought you were talking will to save. someone yeah, named Will. Well, I was yeah. just waiting for your save. Will. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll my new Norse foundry die. Oh, as am I. Right. As am I. I we don't need your life too. story. <laughs> just give me the number. Let's take this brand new die out for a spin. Natty, could... Natty 16 for Ooh, 24. Yeah. Oh. Norse foundry. Joey Jojo. Come on, Nor. Fuck. North Foundry, you bastard! <laughs> That's North a, Foundry. That is a dirty nine. Oh. Oh. Oh no. You're gonna be so mad. Sydney, special guest Sydney. Twenty-seven. Oh, oh. Yeah. That's the big one. That might big be a huge. channel in you yet, and Skidmar. Uh, that is Eldo got a sixteen. A tween so the audience went, nope. Yeah. Oh, dear. Oh. Ever heard of a spell called Glitter Dust? Yeah. Because when you fail that spell, you blind. Oh. And Aldo and Bungleby oh. are blind. Oh, come on. You'll get a new save at the end of uh, your round to see if you can end the blindness effect. But you're all covered with this golden glittery bedazzlement. So if you try to go invisible, it doesn't matter. It's not going to happen. It makes my armor look awesome. You look fabulous. fabulous. <laughs> Round one. Oh, look at that. She goes again. However, let's just put her on the map. I want you to see her. I want you to look at the face of your enemy before she kills Winter. Oh. oh. Let me do a little blow up here. Hello. Oh. Oh. She has her lungs oh. and her stomach. 
It's like Possibly a her liver. A Junji Ito. It's so good. It's like I love somebody it. Somebody really fucked up Gene Simmons. <laughs> Is that an actual pair of lungs? Yep. He- oh. oh. Fucked up. And kidneys. No, that's, I think that's a stomach. You shut up, Matthew. What are you, an anatomist now? She is going to cast a spell. While she is singing, she just... Oh, like she was slamming on a guitar, a Gene Simmons-like kiss <laughs> guitar. <laughs> and let's loose... A little thing called Chord of Shards. Oh, yeah. That's a good yes, one. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody give me a reflex, John. Oh, okay. hell yeah. Hell yeah. Back in the Council of Thieves days, Skid used to rip off a few. Uh, None of these people Jane were Lowe. here for that. Jane, oh, Jane Lowe. Jane, Jane, Jane Lowe. Right. Oh, actually, yeah. And, Chord uh, of Shards. Yeah, and uh, um, the other guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Johnny yeah. Halfway? No, no. The, what was his name? I don't uh, know. But uh, Toby Bramble. Toby Bramble. Toby nice. Bramble. This was in their home game that none of you were None of you were to. there for, yeah. Hope you enjoyed that little side talk. Yeah. Let me see the reflex save there, Sue Jirley. Natural 20. Oh! oh! For a 22. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, the rogue reflexes your jam. You, I'm sure you crushed this one, right, buddy? Nope. 16. That's a fail. Um, what about winter? 22. Not wow. bad. Wow. 22, buddies. 22 buddies. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like that trip to the gift store went well. Maybe you shouldn't have skipped out on your friends and went to the movie. <laughs> Skid, what'd you roll reflex-wise? I have a very good reflex save. Plus seven. Uh, I rolled my new bloodstone, gorgeous bloodstone Norse Foundry die. I rolled a natural two. That's Norse Foundry. <laughs> All your random number generating needs. Aldo and Bunglebee take seven points of piercing damage as the notes of this chord transform into a shower of razor sharp crystalline shards. And now it is Bunglebee's turn. <laughs> He's fucking blind and filled. <laughs> With fucking shrapnel. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 uh, uh. <laughs> I think that was a full round action. Yep. Aldo. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Do you want to do anything? I don't um, know, man. Totally. Are you the only blind one or are you a blind too? I'm also blind. Oh. Just hold uh, up. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll show you where she is. Do you want to hold or do you want to yeah, I'll delay. go rogue? Aldo. <laughs> See, that wasn't even intentional. It just kind of happens. Worth the price of admission. When I actually play. Aldo, do you want to hold as well or do you want to strike out boldly into the dark? Uh, I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to hold and I'm going to be screaming. It's a ah, Where is she? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Winter's turn. Uh, Winter is going to channel positive energy. Oh, look who's going to channel positive energy, but Directly. you're going to channel to try to hurt her. What? You're going to yes, try to yes, hurt yes, her. Yes, yes, yes. Only at her selective casting, at her healing her with positive energy. No. Nope. no. Hurting, hurting her. Hurting, hurting sorry. her. Healing Damaging. positive energy that hurts her because she's bad. We talked about this in Milwaukee. Very confusing. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm doing the one that hurts her. Thanks. I don't want to uh, tell tales after school, but you are just assuming she's undead. Yes, with my knowledge of being a cleric in necromancy, with Phrasma as my god, I am assuming she's undead. Okay. There are mechanics for that as well, if you wish to. Oh, also, I do have my aura. Is she evil? I know that. Uh, do you? Yes, my Let's aura. Let's roll a knowledge religion. Let's see what you do know, Winter Klaxa. Hmm. I don't have religion. You have religion. Do I? Yes. Hold on. It's Easter weekend. We all have a little religion. Oh, I do. It's a lot, actually. Yeah. Look who found... priest. She just found God. 24. 24? Yeah. Now we can talk like adults. This is a creature known as a penangolin. Penangolin. 
I just wanted to see if I could make Joe spit his drink out. <laughs> this is a Penangalan. Your friends have fought a Monongonal. This is a Monongonal. Penangalan. Uh, Wait, was that the torso? The Monongonal was the torso, yes. yes. Okay. This is the Penangalan. The Penangalan, you know, as a wise religious cleric, creates Monongonals. She is like this beautiful, sexy woman that just walks around during the day creating monongonals, looking for victims that she can fucking turn into monongonals. Monongonal. But she's a penangolin. Penangolin. (laughs) I relay this to the party in full detail. It's okay. a pen- penangolin. Winter yells back, it's a penangolin, and none of they you know. They create penangolins! None of you know what that means. All right, I'm going to roll a will save okay. a, to try and avoid taking full damage from your Chanzoni. What is the DC of your channel? That's a really good question. It's going to take 45 16. minutes. Oh, nice. 16, okay. What were you going to say, Joe? Shut up. Made it. I'm only going to take half damn. All right, that's 3d6. Okay. Watch this be like four points of difference. Oh no. It's not good. Oh no. Fuck. Uh, seven total, you take three. Oh, three. Damn it. Ow, she says. I got confused. Penangalang, Mananganal, I was like looking through a book. I got confused. I guess I got confused. Three points of damage. What it is, is Sir Julie's. Do you want to move? Uh, where am I on the map? Hold on. Uh, You're you right know what? up next to her. <laughs> I am definitely going to move, and I go like this, do, 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 to the corner of the room, arms out. Okay. So like a coward, you run. No, like a <laughs> cleric. Sorry, I think you're confusing oh, the sorry. words. <laughs> like a cowardly cleric, you run <laughs> to the southwest corner, and it is Sir Julie Andrews, a paragon of good. Does she? Does this Penangalang look anything like um, the the ghost of... Lyle's mother that we are encountered already? Ooh. No. Okay. In that case, I shall step up. <laughs> Wait, but... You are being interrogated by Congress. This is... Yeah, I know. We're no. sitting no. like it, too. It's like... like... Wait, player, player yeah. question, though. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Player question, because I'm, I'm dumb. Penangalang is undead. This uh, floating head with entrails? <laughs> yeah, You're not, not 100% not sure. Yeah, she's on. In t- the traditional sense. Is it, sorry, is it evil? Let's take a look. <laughs> I don't what know do you say? It? Let's pull the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Good or evil audience? Tough call. <laughs> Tough call. I need to know for damage for spells. She might just be misunderstood. All right. <laughs> He's evil, thank you. And this, that I is my case. true neutral if I've ever seen it. Are, Are you, you asking if the headless uh, entrail dripping thing that goes around killing people and turning them into Never mind. monongonals is Just evil? Just forget it. <laughs> and you gave me shit for the Diane Weiss thing? <laughs> I ask a real question <laughs> to the GM. Hannah and her sister. Sir Julie will step up and take a swing. Power, uh, power attack, furious. Wow. Oh, power, attack, oh, power attack, furious, focus. Power attack, furious, focus. That is going to be a 25. Yes. yes. If only Aldo and Bungleby could see it. That's a hit. Uh, that's going to be minimum damage, 15 points oh, of damage. Gross. And then I shall shout, it's here. Right, follow the sound of my voice and then add five feet. <laughs> Follow the sound. <laughs> <laughs> Triangulate between the sound of my voice and the sound of her shrill singing. What a battle tactician Sir Julie is. I describe it in such a way that it's unmistakable where she is. Would Bungleby and Aldo like to take their turn? I, I'm scared to. The thing is, like, if I throw uh, one of my bombs and miss, I don't get to exclude any allies from the bombs effects right so i'm really afraid of of missing so i i think i'm just going to continue to to hold can't see continue to hold what about you bungles he'll bungle up there he'll bungle into that situation okay 
tripping over himself. <laughs> falls. Falls into Sir Julie's back. Bangs Smashes his nose his on her armor. Bed. Walks straight into the bed. What did you say? <laughs> five feet in front. Ah! And he stabs with a dagger. It's so dumb. Fifty percent. It, it's so preposterous. Yeah, you might hit it. Ridiculously stupid. Uh, 21 to hit. Okay, now can you miss the 50% miss chance? 88 on the jump. Oh! oh! <laughs> Far be it from me. Four max damage. Oh! Nine points of damage. Let's okay, go. what kind of weapon do you have? A plus one dagger. Feels like that didn't all go through. Feels like you should shut your mouth. <laughs> How dare you talk Should to I fight like him? Yeah! Is this like a violence crowd? Yeah! We're it's not in Portland yet. It's a bunch of drunk Midwesterners. What do you think? <laughs> Isn't Brock Lesnar from here? Yeah! All right. Uh... Aldo's gone. Uh, Bungleby has moved in the Anish Ord, and it goes to the top of round two. This is when it will be her turn. And if, for example, she had any fast healing, that would uh, click on right now. I'm just just talking aloud, just making some notes to myself. Ho, hum, hum, ho. How about a full attack? Wait, wait, wait. Shut up. <laughs> Didn't you say we get to save every round on the blindness? Oh! Juicy Joe's coming after you, motherfucker. <laughs> and his name is John C. <laughs> Each round, at the end of their turn, blind creatures may attempt new saving throws to end the blindness, John. Where Aldo this? did not take his Where turn. Where this is John? It does the... say John. <laughs> Hero lad needs some blindness. Paizo's coming around. <laughs> Give me a will save to see if you end your blindness. 13. You've wasted all of our time. <laughs> I'll take, I'm going to take my turn. You're going to take your turn? <laughs> Uh, he's gonna scream, I wish I weren't blind! <laughs> Full Natural round. 19! Yes! Oh, she's so dead. So wait a minute, all those back. <laughs> so, hearing Sir Julie's cry, you just hurl it in the direction just beyond Sir Julie. With no sight whatsoever, give me a 50% mischance. No, no, no. He no, just, that was no, his no. save. He oh, that was your save? Yeah. Yeah, he just spent his turn Oh, he for spent the, save. the turn spent to take turn the... Screaming. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming. Eric's going to give it to you, Troy. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, I... I I should have taken X gonna give it to you more seriously. <laughs> <laughs> That's on me as the GM. It is now her turn. And I'm upset with your gameplay. What else is new? All of her. S I can't believe we thought we'd get through this. <laughs> yeah. Know, what a fool. What a fool. Uh, it is her turn, and she is now just going to uh, not do what the book suggests, because I think this is more fun and dangerous. Who should I bite, and who should I slam? They're both bad. Halster. 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 Like, I'll be right back. I concur. Yeah, I concur as well. I, doctor, open. I concur, doctor. I open the sarcophagus. <laughs> Let me, uh, give me one moment to consult with my attorney. <laughs> Halster. <laughs> I am going to bite Bungleby. Mm. Or attempt to you're bite. Talking to Steve. <laughs> 23. Yeah. A couple things are going to happen. Oh! First is the damage. Six points of damage. Give me a fortitude save. Oh, no. Halfling. Are you immune to anything? Uh, not, not fortitude based. Okay. Here we go. 
Come on, Norse Foundry, you failed me twice. Come on! Natty 19! Yeah! At 25. Then she goes to slam <laughs> Sir Julie, just he, hitting her with a lung. <laughs> Sp- <laughs> Sp- uh, Never in all my years. Take that night. 27 to hit. Yeah. Thanks to old neon green. Oh! oh wow. Made the trip. Things been rolling rocks backstage. Talk about a couple things are going to happen. First, let's just deal with a regular old damage. Four points of damage. Okay. Oh, man, I'm going to fuck you up, Sir Julie. <laughs> Give me a fortitude save. Is oh, this man. a disease? You're a disease. If I had a nickel for every time. Um, <laughs> no, it's a supernatural uh, job. Not fear. Not not a fear effect. Nope. You should be afraid, though. Oh. Natural one. Oh, oh no! Thank you! Oh, oh, this is no. gonna be so bad! Oh, oh no. no! Her entrails drip with this fucking bile of blisters that just starts to wither your flesh when she oh. slams you with her lung. You take two points of charisma damage. Oh! And three points of dex damage. Oh, sh- oh my oh, no. god! No! Oh, she's not done! Because then she goes to grab you. What the? A lung doesn't even have opposable thumbs. <laughs> it's a lung grab. This is gonna be close. Classic lung grab. Yeah, 17 against CMD. Uh, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here? Get out of here. Nice! Did you add your dex drain? Oh. How many, how many decks? It was three charisma and how many decks? It was two charisma and three decks. Don't embarrass yourself. Can we roll back the tape? Can we roll back the tape? There is no tape. Still? Get out of here. Yeah! yeah! Not bad, Sir Julie. Not bad. It is Winter Clax's turn. <sighs> yep. Not good. Um, I think f- still. <laughs> uh, from a distance, uh, save his From bet. a distance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am going to again channel positive energy. Okay. Make your will save. I shall. Uh, ooh, actually, this is going to be close. I think I still have it because I get a little plus bone to my channel resistance. That's going to be a 19. Yeah, that yes. saves. Give me your shitty half damage. Okay. All right. Fuck it. It's, it's the same. It's the same as last time. I rolled seven. It's three. I don't know what's happening. Wow. Well, the good news is it gets past all of her damage reduction. So she gets three total. Yep. Great. The bad news is it's terrible. Do you want to move at all? Fuck no. 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 Well, Sir Julie, you are ugly and less dexterous than you were six seconds ago. It was was a better time six seconds ago. (laughs) I remember those past seconds so fondly. (laughs) Your friends are looking at you differently. I don't care. I know I have other strengths besides my good looks. Um, we need to get out of this fast. Yeah. I'm going to smite evil. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Sir Julie! In uh, Winter's knowledge check, or I could roll my own if you need me to, need me, uh, to is this, uh, is this Penangalang uh, uh, an, e- uh, <laughs> an outsider with the evil subject? Or an undead creature. Yep. It's undead. Undead. Yeah, it's undead. And evil. Yes, you know this. So, I get some bon- I get some bonuses. Yeah. Full attack. Okay. And smiting evil doesn't provoke. This is just swift a swift. Action, swift, no. swift okay. All right, so you're smiting evil. You see this. Yeah, we need You've to fought this creatures fast. like this in the world wound, yeah. but now you're uglier and older. Uh, that is a critical threat. Oh, oh yes! Oh! 
Critical threat, critical no. threat, critical, 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 critical threat. I take it back, I'm wrong. I had left the keen edge on, and it has certainly been more than 10 minutes. How embarrassing. It still is a 33 to hit. Okay. That is a hit. Okay. This is going to be 33 points yeah. of damage. Oh, yes. All I right. smite thee, I creature. Smite that was significant. <laughs> <laughs> and no DR. FYI. You just walk out and you come back and you're going to tell me how to run my show? That's what I do. It's called a backseat GM. Look it up. Uh, now I shall take my second attack. That's fine. Uh, ooh, tweener. 19 to hit. Get out of here with that shit. Right. Oh. You got okay. a big hit, though. All right, and I will take a five-foot step back. Okay, the newly unblinded Bungleby can now act. So um, Julie just heroically smashed this thing. Are you a hero? Uh, yeah. Uh, but I am a blind hero. <laughs> I'm blind as shit. Unless someone cast remove blind while I was no. in the bathroom. <laughs> make your save, though. No, I didn't. You well, you, you get another chance to make your save now. At the end of your turn. At the end, yeah. of, oh, the yeah. end of the turn. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, just wildly stab. Baby. Okay. 50% miss chance. You know where she is. 50% miss chance, uh, and I miss on the miss chance regardless, and then uh, second attack and miss on the miss chance. Okay. Thanks for wasting everybody's time. <laughs> and then save. And then save. All right. It's, it's Will, right? It it's keeps being No, Will. it's Bungleby. <laughs> these, people, these people paid for what these jokes. <laughs> what game are we playing? Uh, that's a 17. DC 18. I'm so sorry. Oh. oh, thanks for playing, Bungles. It's Aldo's turn. Aldo, can you turn the tides here? Aldo looks at the heavens and says, It's a miracle I can see! And he moves across the room to the other side of the bed. Nice. Great position. Pulls nice. out one of his bombs. From Hold on, his, I thought you were blind. <laughs> no, 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 I can see a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a bomb. All right, so I, I want to explain here. Uh, that because of the Walgreens in the city close at 5 p.m. on a weekend. <laughs> Makes a ton of sense. I was not able to buy any more little bags of M&Ms. But there is a Candyland a few doors down, a little loose candy store. Uh, I had probably the most stressful encounter I've had with a vendor uh, in the last several months, trying to describe what I wanted her to give me. Uh, but I have these little bags of candy. They will function as my bombs. So he cocks back his arm and shouts out, Have a little fire, Scarecrow! Oh, oh. I almost knocked that woman unconscious from that light career. Yeah, as the light it yeah. nailed that Fresnel and came down at lightning speed. That is an 18 against touch, I see. That's a hit. Yeah, yeah buddy. Yeah. Oh, and this fire is going to be juicy. Ooh, okay, that is 15 points of fire damage. You notice that not all of that goes through. Right. Perhaps she has a little resistance fire. Perhaps she is still ablaze, however. She has caught fire herself. She has caught see. fire. She can resist that too. All that hair. Yeah. That's fire. right. It smells like singed undead hair in this oh. room now. Oh. Roll for it, it's it. <laughs> it's like Matthew in a room full of candles. <laughs> Gotta be careful how close I walk to them. We tried to shoot a video of uh, Matthew recreating the police video where Sting dances in that room full of candles. It stunk to high heaven. <laughs> the cameraman couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> it's terrible. It's round three, and it's her turn, so what do I I take more fire damage? Uh, yes. Let's you see if it take... gets past her resist. Uh, probably not. Two points of fire damage. As Matthew would say, get out of here with that shit. It's my turn. And I'm mad. And I'm mad. 
All right. Oh, that looks pretty good. All right, here we go. Who's got really shitty fortitude? The blind halfling. Me. I, the paladin, have poor fortitude. <laughs> she unleashes an ear-piercing scream, oh. which doesn't provoke because you're blind. Give me a fortitude save, right, rogue. Oh my God, this is bad. He's gonna be. Yeah. I just, I just want you to come over to my box here. I'm gonna steal look. your thunder. I want you to look. Wait, what? Did you uh, steal my thunder? No, I'm just gonna. I know what else happens besides the damage, which is the least of my concerns. Uh, eleven. Okay. I rolled Fail. the 3d6. Yeah. I would like you to come look at the 3d6. No. I'd rather not. Place. I would like you. I'd rather not. Come look at the 3d6. Stop yeah. making me do things I don't want to do. Joe, it's not good. As your attorney, I advise you not to look. <laughs> <laughs> How many sixes did I roll? You rolled more sixes than I ever rolled in any ability score roll in all of middle school. Three sixes. Maximum scream damage. Maximum scream damage. You take 18 points of damage and you're dazed. For one round. Dazed, <laughs> blind. Yeah. And it's not like I did anything. <laughs> yeah, but God damn it, Joe. Have you for, has it, have you forgotten, Sydney, what it's like to play with Joe? <laughs> I blame Joe. Troy's rolling. I'm like, Joe, damn it. I'll heal you. Don't worry, buddy. Rocks over here. Oh, blind and dazed, McGee. Woo. It's Winter's turn. Winter, you have been. Also pretty poorly effective with your three points of damage you've done the last couple of rounds. Yep. Care to switch up your tactics? Nope, I'm gonna turn it around. I'm gonna channel positive energy positively and heal my allies. Ah, all right. There we go. I like it. That's so let's see I if I can- call a waste of channel. That's not true. Yes, that's well documented. <laughs> oh. Okay, that one's fine. Oh. Okay. Six. Fourteen points. Fourteen oh. points. Nice, Sid. Nice. nice. A true cleric. I want to heal. I don't want to hurt. So. You want to heal. You don't want to hurt. Okay. Sir Julie. Five foot step up. Smite. Power attack. Fury. Focus. Etc. Etc. Yeah, this, this should do it. This thing is so dead. Uh, Thirty-two to hit. There we go. Yes. Okay. Uh, that is 30 points of damage. It was a poor roll, by the way. Right, right, 30 points of damage. Carry the two, divide it by three. And what are you guys talking about? Uh, revise. Uh, it is, Joe is correct. It is only 23 points of damage. Oh. So sorry she's still alive. Okay, second attack. Finish one her more. Off. One more. Finish her off. Natural one, natural one, natural one, natural one. No, miss. No! Oh. Yikes. Oh, it's coming for us now. It is Bungleby Luna's turn. <laughs> <laughs> He's blind. He's dazed. He's dying. What can you do? You are unable to act normally. You can take no actions, but you have no penalty to your AC. It is Aldo's turn. <laughs> I'm gonna roll a save. Oh! Against the blind? Only because it's against, it's the rules of the game. Here we go. 19? You said it was DC 18, right? DC 18, yeah! yeah. So, it, well, oh, this is a good question. I was going to say it's kind of like sleep paralysis. <laughs> so he opens oh. his eyes, but he's dazed. Now, is he dazed? Yes. It doesn't just last for one round? It does last for one round. This is the round that it lasts for. Oh, so it goes back to her turn. All right, all right. <laughs> Zelda's turn. Right. <laughs> this is the round that it lasts for. <laughs> all right. Aldo draw, draws one more bomb. 
one final bomb. So I send thee back to hell! Oh, oh yeah! <laughs> Uh, that is a 19 against touch AC. 19 against touch is a hit. Yeah. Okay, finish okay. it. It's over. Kill it. Uh, that is 16 points of fire damage. 16 points of fire damage minus the 10 energy resistance fire, and Ooh. she is still up. Wow! Resistance 10! Resistance 10! Oh. And it's her turn at the top of round four. She, by the way, grew up in St. Paul. <laughs> oh, if, I, you're, before if you're on you move, the fence about before who Before you move for. on, uh, so that's a standard action, me throwing the bomb. So as my move action, I'm going to draw a wand. Also, it's her turn. Take burn damage. It doesn't matter. We found out. Oh, wait. It would have to be more than 10. Oh, no. oh right, because 10. Well, yeah. fuck it, never mind. You come, <laughs> you come here and you play two shows and you think you know everything. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, she, you're right. You're right. Technically, just, I'm right. There's mitigating Her hair burns a little bit more. It smells like shit. Okay. Go back to Brooklyn, hippie. <laughs> <laughs> it's her turn. Got a little glitter dust, little hold purse. Hold purse. You know hold what, my no, purse. I, I want to do these. Yeah, please hold my purse. Let's say fourth level spell she just expended. That's not true. She's a bard. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, of course she is. Court of shards. Penanglin bard. Uh, all right, I'm going to do the attacks again. But I think I'm going to do them both on Bunglebee. Come for me, coward. No. No, I don't want to do that. Uh... I just want to fuck you up, Bungleby. Here we go. Let's do the bite. First is the bite. 22 on the bite against a dazed Bungleby. Yeah, he's dazed, looking far off gaze. He doesn't know it's there. And you go and hit him, and he's just like... <laughs> Miss. Miss. Oh. Yes. Somehow. How, how is he doing this? That's embarrassing. Is he a hero? <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing for both of us. All right, here comes the slam. This is the one that can really mess you up. This is the thing that withered Sir. what was left of Sir Julie's shitty looks. She whacked me with her lung. Natural one. Oh, yes! Yes! Yeah! That's the yeah! dex damage one. Oh, yes. Come on, tumble, you bastard. The will tumble. Confirm the fum. Confirm fum. Yeah! 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 The monsters will rumble, the dice they will tumble, and the fum So disappointing. Uh, all right, let's go to, is Christian from Roseville, Minnesota here? Mr. Christian, your, your time has come. Hi, Christian. No. We're going to read your motherfucking fumble right now. All right. Uh, big thank you to Michael, by the way, who has helped us uh, curate these so that we can get you guys better ones. Christian from Roseville, Minnesota. Are we living in a simulation? Yep. You ponder the nature of reality, causing your weapon to temporarily blink out of existence. You lose control as your weapon passes through the target and reappears on the other side. Natural weapon, which is what you did. Make a reflex save to keep from falling prone. Oh! So it's a reflex save against my A yeah. sizzle. Yeah, yeah. Nice. She hits you with her lung, but okay. <laughs> hey, that's it a heavy hurt. lung. It's a heavy lung, and it hurts when you lose it. 27. She's all right. So it's just a miss. It's just a miss. But thank you, Christian. Yeah. Thank you, Christian. Where's Roseville? Is that close to here? Yeah. Yeah. Right over that there. Way. People are, people that are way. pointing to the lights. Up there. It's right up there. There's Roseville. It's in the ceiling of the building? <laughs> it's a very small town. What a quaint little town. Good for that town. It's in the north! To the north! The town to the north! All right. 
Everybody shut up. <laughs> it's Winter's turn. I can't believe you thought we were going to get through this. I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> with, with these rolls? It's like you forgot uh, there's an audience here. That's, that slows things down a little bit. I knew I'm, we wouldn't. I'm going to do the only thing that I know gets through. I'm going to do another channel positive to damage. There you go. Because everything I, I have is useless. It's That's just That's a buffs. good thing. All right. Make your roll save. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> the guest in my house. Natural one. Again. Yeah. 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 yeah! He's chaining the one! Be hungry! Okay. It's ten damage. It all goes through. I hold my holy symbol, it's a dagger. She's dead. Yeah! Sydney! Oh, yes! My dagger just glides through the lungs, cuts him open, and trails to the floor. With a channel? Yeah, with a channel. You it wouldn't think. It was channel positive dagger? It's, a, it's, like a, it's like a non-corporeal dagger. It just goes through and cuts it open. Okay. It's beautiful. It's ethereal. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Good save. <laughs> Thank you, Sydney. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. All right. It's late. Everybody shut up. <laughs> the creature falls to the ground on the strength of that channel dagger. <laughs> <laughs> it's a holy symbol. It makes sense. <laughs> oh. I checked the ebony desk. Shut up. You checked ebony. <laughs> Check the ebony desk. And search her body. Yeah, that's true. You look through the folds of her lungs and her kidneys. What are the contents of her stomach? Yeah. <laughs> like jaws. Could yeah. it tell? <laughs> the size of her liver. She's a drinker. Oh. oh. You hate to see it. She is from St. Paul. She's clearly a Midwesterner by the size of that, <laughs> the massive size of that yellowed liver. Her name, you don't know. Perhaps you'll never know. What's in the desk? <laughs> What's in the desk? What's in the desk? Let's talk about this room. Let's talk about the armoire first, because I want to go in my order. It's disorganized. I it's... refuse to search the armoire. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's fair enough. What's in the armoire? You want to search the whole room. Yes. yes. We take 20. Taking 20. Taking 20. We are moving at blazing speed. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Where do I want to start? You know what? Let's talk about the armoire. <laughs> <laughs> it's rather disorganized and grimy. Ooh. Like Matthew's bathroom. My it's bathroom hair. is spotless. Yeah. hair everywhere. <laughs> there is a eclectic collection of expensive clothing unlike Matthew's bathroom. <laughs> that part is true. It's everything from Baby Gap. <laughs> it's for him, not his daughter. Oh, is it I wear Baby Gap? <laughs> yeah, it, was just a ba it had a baby. He just has a, a baby. A cute, no, it's for him, though. It's like a pair of skorts. I see. <laughs> when the the proportion weather, better. When the weather's it. nice, he walks through Astoria Park in his new skorts <laughs> from Baby Gap. You see an ample cloak a fur coat, a frock that Sydney wouldn't recognize because it is Kadiran styled. <laughs> what is it. that? I can't even see it. What? I don't even I know what it is. It's stymied by that frock. It's like it's from another world. <laughs> you see a couple of silk turbans, a oh. wide brimmed hat, and half a dozen shirts with lace trimmed collars and sleeves. You're looking through everything and you see that coat on the peg on the wall. And you're looking through that as well and you see a folded piece of parchment in the pocket of the coat. It is a permit to visit an inmate of Briarstone Asylum named Ulver Zandalus. Oh. Oh. Praise, praise. Praise, wow. praise. Praise, fail. 
The issued by signature says, Administrator Eliage Losandro. R.I.P. On the writing desk lies a disorderly stack of handwritten notes. And as you start to read them, you realize you're reading Lal's notes. (laughs) They're a little all over the place. But as you start to go through them, you spend some time, you see the last note in this stack mentions someone named the Mad Poet, who apparently told the Count to look for a book called the Necronomicon. <laughs> oh, that's all the Kadir and stuff. Yeah, right. In the note, Lowell's mentions some names you recognize. Aldo, Atticus, Carthamalasaurid, Burl, Halster Price, and some other names you don't even recognize. And it says that you are all companions of his in a revelatory dream. He writes, and I quote, the sacrifice of their minds put them into a fugue state, but they lived unable to remember their lives or react to outside stimuli. Lowell's concludes this last note by saying that you are to be turned over to the warden of Briarstone Asylum, quote, according to our agreement. Whoever's reading this aloud, Aldo, you hear the note being read and suddenly you are taken back somewhere else, a different place, a different time. You look around you and you see Atticus walking with you. You see Mrs. O'Lady. You see the green loser. (laughs) Always a chance to bring it up. Every show, huh? He falls in the sand and stands up, takes a few more steps, falls again, (laughs) poops himself. You see Halster and a handful of other faces with you that are blurry. And you all seem to be walking together in a dreamlike desert, like something out of a Salvador Dali painting. Amazing. And just in the distance is a man whose features you can't quite make out from the haze of the desert heat, but you see that he's wearing the same overcoat that you just pulled that note out of. Looks like he has a long beard. Okay. That's how they say it out here. A traditional Kadiran bleard. Right, a Kadiran bleard. (laughs) What is that? Well, you wouldn't understand. I'll tell you later, Sydney. You wouldn't know. He has a long beard and these tiny little like John Lennon glasses. John Lennon. John? Who's that? John Lennon had a bleard? <laughs> yes. In his, in his late life, he was heavily bleared. <laughs> bleared. Bleared. Heavily bleared John Lennon. So you see this guy. He's got that overcoat on. He has a beard and John Lennon glasses. And he's watching you and all of your companions approaching a hut in the distance. In this moment, you are certain that this man is Count Hazerton Laos the Fourth, accompanying you and Atticus and Halster and Burl and Mrs. O'Lady and some other people. Up ahead you see this hut. And you see a man walk out of the hut. His features you can't quite make out as well, but he appears very, very old. And he looks at you and all of your friends and says, Call me the mad po. 
poet. Abdul Al Azred. <gasps> and we'll see you in Portland. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> The Mad Poets! Thank you, St. Paul! Thank you, St. Paul! Should we come back? You guys are amazing! Should we come back? You promise you'll come? Sarah! We're coming back! <laughs> <laughs>